Hello everyone and welcome to the visual mods that I normally use with Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul. So this is assuming the real solar system and all of that business. And this is specifically in reference to the videos that I've been doing talking about the Giulio Dondi Space Shuttle. And so I've done a video on installing it and running it. And now it's uh, sprucing up the area of Cape Canaveral in particular in order to make it look the best that you can. And so the first thing we're going to do is fire up CCAN. I often get asked about the visual mods that I use. It does depend on whether I'm doing real solar system or something else like JNSQ. And so this is just going to be for real solar system. And sometimes it depends on what exactly I'm doing in the install. Uh, for the space shuttle, I would consider using the volumetric clouds and RSS Reborn and all that business. But I'll leave that out for now. RSS Reborn can be its own topic and it's currently being revised. Uh, the textures are being improved. So I don't want to talk about how to install it until that process is complete. Uh, because there's one version of RSS Reborn that's on... Uh, on Google Drive and another version that's on GitHub and the GitHub one is still in process. So anyway, uh, so we'll set RSS Reborn aside for now. And the first thing we want to do is get Distant Object Enhancement. So that's pretty normal. We don't need the default configuration. Hopefully RSS Visual Enhancements has the configuration for Distant Object Enhancement. That's normally what happens. These particular visual mods rely on some configuration from outside of it. And those configuration packages are like uh, stock visual enhancements, RSS visual enhancements, um, astronomer's visual pack or stuff like that. Those will have the configurations to configure the visual mods. Otherwise, they might have a default configuration, but that might be suboptimal for especially something like real solar system. So we've got that. And then I'm going to get planet shine uh, for Post-processing, I normally use KS3P, but I don't believe that is on CCAN. And the KS3P is just uh, KSP post-processing, that's all it's called. There's another alternative, it's name uh, slips my mind right now, but I don't generally use it. Parallax is an option, but it's pretty hefty, and I haven't really gotten it to work right with real solar systems, so I'm setting it aside for now. In theory, RSS Reborn has a configuration for it, but I still didn't see it actually working properly, so... Okay, so there's a lot of other things, but again, not everything is real solar system compatible. Planet Shine should have a real solar system configuration with RSS visual enhancements. Skyboxes are a thing that you can play around with. There are a lot of them available. Depends on the feel that you want. RSS uh, Canaveral HD is going to give us the nice Cape Canaveral terrain. And usually going along with that is Cape Canaveral pads. So I think that basically does it. Normally I would have textures unlimited. That's normally already installed by something else. We've already got Real Plumes, Waterfall, and RSS Visual Enhancements. So if you... Uh, RSS Visual Enhancements is recommended when you install Real Solar System and Realism Overhaul. So if you did the install process the way I did, you probably will have it already. But just in case, uh, RSS Visual Enhancements high resolution is here. So just for review, Distant Object Enhancement, Planet Shine, RSS Cape Canaveral HD, or RSS Canaveral HD, and Cape Canaveral Launch Pads, or Canaveral Pads. So, I'm going to apply those changes, and what we'll see is there's a whole bunch of extra stuff. Uh, Cape, uh, Kerbal Constructs we will be using, and it's a dependency of Canaveral Pads. Planet Shine, uh, Distant Object Enhancement, uh, Omega's stock-like structures are more structures for Kerbal constructs that you can use, and same with Tundra's Space Center. And so we, we're getting more mods than it seems, but I didn't think to specify them separately because they are going to be installed as dependencies, but they're all very useful. So let us apply. Okay, so with that done, let's see how it works. It's normal not to see clouds on this screen, by the way, even if you have RSS Visual Enhancements installed. 
So the first thing you should notice with Canaveral HD is that you have the Cape Canaveral terrain right here and that looks much better than before. It should show up. Uh, if you don't have high enough resolution textures for real solar system itself, that might cause problems, but generally it excludes uh, this area. In other words, it basically removes the terrain from this area in order to place itself. So there shouldn't be any problems. And well, we can check the clouds. Well, of course we can just look up, but there they are. Uh, that's just with RSS visual enhancements and with environmental visual enhancements, which is a mod that relies on and will install for you automatically. Okay, so one thing that's critical right now is that we have this uh, Kerbal Constructs menu, this, and that will let you pick which pad you want to launch from, and we can see that we have quite a lot of pads. These are added by Canaveral pads, and let's say we do uh, 39A, so open base, set launch site. Well, what does it look like? Well, let's see. Does it look like it's ready to host the shuttle? Ah, sometimes uh, Kerbal Constructs doesn't like to send it to the right pad initially. So what I do is a little down. I don't know why. Uh, I set that as a launch site. That again. Try. And then it works. So yes, you may have to do that little dance. But now we have a problem, right? Uh, the shuttle doesn't have its shuttle structure here anymore. They have dismantled that, I guess. So what do we do about that? We want it to look right for the shuttle. Now, you don't have to do this if you're not interested in launching the shuttle, but we would like to have this pad be shuttle-like. And so I'm going to add in the, in the video description the old real launch sites mod and this was worked on by Crispy Bacon and Tristan Wilson 12 and the, there is a forum page on it uh, this is the forum page on it sorry I'm cropping the left side uh, but um, real KSC in KSP dev continued by Tristan Wilson 12 the problem is it hasn't been updated in a very 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 long time uh, so, for safety's sake, I'm just going to uh, provide the zip file in the video description. It is distributed under uh, Creative Commons with Attribution, and so I'm attributing it to them. Uh, Tristan Wilson 12, Crispy Bacon, and NASA, and I've added a license file in the mod uh, with those references, and with the main license as well. And so this is the zip file that I am going to provide and so it'll have the game data folder and then the folder that you want to unzip is TWRLS so Tristan Wilson's version of real launch sites and so in game data just drop that in now it's a very simple thing all it does is add the various models so we can see a model for Launch Complex 5, 14. Most of these uh, have already been placed. It's only because Launch Complex 39A, the shuttle structure has been demolished that we really need it. So we're looking for the shuttle tower and the mobile launch pad for the shuttle, just these two pieces. And we'll have to place them ourselves. I could add a file to place it, but I haven't. So I'll just show you how to do that with Kerbal Constructs. I think it's a good thing to learn. So having placed this in here, I'm going to have to restart the game. Okay, here we are again. And first of all, in the VAB, we have to do our little dance with Kerbal Constructs. So I'm actually, even though it's on the right launch site right now, I'm going to set KSP launch pad first and then go to this. And you may have to do that every time you load a new craft file. Okay, and then Control K to bring up the Kerbal Constructs menu. If you've done nothing wrong, it should pop up. And we can see there's the pad. The pad, this launch pad here is actually this base thing here. And we've already got a higher quality one, though, except for the stripey bits on the side there. But anyway, uh, very good already. Uh, but we do seem to be missing quite a lot of stuff. Oh, this is the, just the local instances. We want to spawn new. Okay, so those are the things that are already placed on uh, Canaveral HD. And what we want is, let's just type in shuttle. 
Okay, so the shuttle landing facility would be the runway, the mobile launch pad. Uh, note the enable colliders. Be sure not to actually have... And I think we need to flip this around 180. So it's like this. And the shuttle will have to be flipped around as well. Technically the trackway is over there, so the whole shuttle should probably be further that way too. But I'm not going to fix that this time. Right now I'm just going to line up the SRBs with it. And of course have the vertical stabilizer not clipping. We don't need to enable colliders. Uh, if you're a glutton for punishment you might want to do that, but I don't see a particular need to do that right now. So okay, that's fine. Let me just save and close. And let's turn the shuttle around in the in the VAB first. We can just revert flight. The object we've already placed should still be there. Now this changes the location, so this is important. Once you've placed it, the shuttle has to be in the same position in the VAB same height, same everything, otherwise it's not going to look quite right with respect to the pad. So we'll see. So yeah, it's shifted a bit and we want to move it more this way. Perhaps with the boosters right in line with the line down there. Let's see. The wings are sort of supposed to be lined up with that. This is pretty close though. Okay, Control K to bring this up again. And in this case, we're editing the local instance that's already here of the mobile launch pad. This. And we can move it around. Really, everything should be a little bit higher. I mean, this should be up here. So, I'm going to go back in the VAB and make sure to move the shuttle higher as well. And here for reference, so we've got the boosters along that line. And for reference, I'm going to look at the back wall here. And sort of get the boosters. Let's say we've got the bottom of the boosters well, sort of above that line on the Kerbal Space Program flag. Though you might have a different flag. <laughs> Uh, maybe this, the bottom of the skirt here with that line. Okay, that looks better. Might not be perfect, but we'll say that's good to go for now. And then we need to spawn as well the shuttle tower. So there's this complex. And we need to rotate it as well. But only by 90 degrees, I think. And it'll be like this. So, perhaps 270, uh, doesn't look quite right, does it? We can see the track on the ground there for the structure, but because of the placement of the spawn, in other words, the spawn is too far this side, it's probably not quite right. Obviously, this swings to sort of cover the shuttle. It may need to be scaled up a little bit too, and so we can do that. Not that much. Anyway, this is why the specific placement I'm going to leave to you guys. <laughs> so, uh, it's quite a lot of freedom to be picky about this. Mm, I don't know exactly how they have the spawn right now, so... I'm going to leave that discussion aside. It might be linked to the pad itself, I'm not sure. Anyway, but now we have a nice little shuttle structure and that's how I do it. I use uh, the real launch pads mod, and I don't want to throttle up, and uh, I just place the structures using Kerbal Constructs as I just did. And let's just make sure that the shuttle launch works.
Okay. It's launched. It should roll. The roll will be automatic based on the placement. So because we were placed rotated, it will roll accordingly. Now sometimes you'll see me using different terrains like uh, my Tampico terrain. My Tampico terrain is not released, but it's made in the same way as Cape Canaveral HD. It's the same sort of uh, add-on, if you will. It's a city for Copernicus. Copernicus is the planet mod that modifies the planets, and one thing you can do is you can add terrain patches using something called City 2. It's a complicated thing, so I'm not going to try to explain it. But that's my own personal one at Tampico. But you could make it for various locations, and so I've done so, and have released terrains for Boca Chica and Edwards and other locations. So those are all similar to this. They are fairly hefty though, so you have to have a lot of RAM to use it. Uh, having all this terrain means that you do need a system with a decent amount of RAM, probably 32 gigabytes of RAM. So anyway, the launch is not the point in this case. I have done my thing with the scenery. Uh, Planet Shine is working. And we can tweak its variables, so increasing... You can see the effect of the ground and atmospheric ambient light there, and the vacuum ambient light, and all of that planet shine intensity. And so it should add a blue glow to things. So that's planet shine. Distant object enhancement will be nice when you're approaching stations, especially. Distant, distant object enhancement is this button here. And so you have distant vessel rendering, and you can set that to a very large distance. And dynamic sky dimming is up to you, so whether you get stars in daylight or not. Showing names on mouse over, so if you want to see the planet names as you hover your mouse over them, that's an option. Don't forget to apply when you've made a change though. As far as the look of the rest of the terrain, that's entirely due to the RSS textures, and so whether you have a nice uh, coastline there or not, that's because of the resolution of the textures that come with RSS, and so you have to pick your texture pack. Scatterer should be installed with RSS visual enhancements automatically. There are different versions of Scatterer, including the one that allows for volumetric clouds, or is used with volumetric clouds. Uh, so that's a complicated thing that I'll talk about when I talk about RSS Reborn. So anyway, uh, again, the shuttle launch is not the point here. I'll leave it for now and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.